Hello, uh, my name is Hussam Al Madani from National Talents at Saudi Arabia. My question has something to do with productivity of the team you start up with. Um, and I listened to Mitch last, um, uh, last, last talk and he mentioned something that resonated with me so much, which is at each stage of any startup, as it grows as a small business and as a medium-sized business, there is a different right team for that model or for that size. Now, in my company, we have crossed this uh, startup phase and we are growing rapidly and I find it very um, challenging to maintain the productivity that we used to have as just four um, um, excited people about the business model we have. So for Roy, who has been with Google for some time and in your new company now, uh, Grokit, in Google, how do you uh, maintain the productivity? Some people, even if they are good, if you are, even if you are recruiting the best people in the world, there has to be, some of them lose interest eventually. How can you create a healthy tension? Um, and sometimes you have to let some people go. How do you maintain the productivity of your team as it grows uh, rapidly? Sometimes even geographically dispersed and becomes very challenging to have that spirit of we can do it with the top quality, we'll, uh, with, the, uh, with a very high productivity level. Uh, it, it, well, I was, it, that question both pertains both to like my time at Google, where I saw like a, a company just grow very quickly, and also to my time at Grokit, where we've been through a number of transitions. And it sometimes we look around, and then people in the room aren't the correct people for the product or business that we're in. Uh, what I'll tell you is I had a, a, a woman that I worked for for a long time who just repeated over and over, whatever opportunity you look for, just look for the one that's growing the fastest, because growth produces the most opportunities. And the, 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 the converse of that uh, is that growth also can produce the, the most casualties. Um, when I think about the, the organization I was in with Google, like literally, like we were doubling the size of the organization every six months, and there were people who were coming in as customer service reps that were suddenly like a year later like managing a big portion of the team and that were growing with role. And there were people alongside them who just struggled to keep up. And I think what there was two things that were coming out of this. One is giving the support for the incredibly talented people and allowing them to grow. Uh, and taking risks on them, but then also just being uh, very decisive ar around what people needed to do on the team um, and whether they should be there for that, that current state of the business. I think most uh, entrepreneurs and most executives get so personally involved and so emotionally involved in what they're doing and emotionally involved with their teams that it's hard to make this decision. Uh, when I arrived at Crockett, I arrived in October, uh, and by December um, had... Um, like of our, our, our one senior executive, our sales team, our law firm, our CFO, and then a variety of our engineers. And I f it sucked. And it sucked because everyone was excited about a new start and all the things we were going to do, and suddenly like a quarter of the team is out the door. And not so much because they were bad people, but it was very simple to see that they had not grown as fast as the company had grown already. Um, and I can tell you the company is so much better today, and all of those people that have moved on, they're all in much better roles that they're much happier in as well. So I think it's part of the, the key part of the process and, and growth. And the thing I would, I would add to that is, especially as the, the founder or founding team, you, no matter what you do, there's no magic the founding team will have a different, and, and basically the team that exists before product market fit happens will have a completely different relationship with each other and the company than the team that joins after product market fit. And for the longest time, I had a problem with that. I was just like, can't, you know, can't I figure out? Like, can I contort myself? Can't I, you know, evangelize or explain better as to why this is so amazing? And the reality is the people that join a company based on the, the belief in it, before you have product market fit, um, and just the, the whole journey of getting to product market fit is, is so unique and special and happens to so few people in the world that that, that relationship is just going to be different than the people who join you because you're successful. And then it just becomes a question of like, okay, well, how do we actually motivate the people that have joined us because we're successful and they want to grow the success because they have an incredibly important role to play. Um, the other thing I, I would just add is, you know, now having done three startups, 
I've noticed something in terms of that team before product market fit that's actually the most important thing, and actually for executives after product market fit, is the thrill of the game. The, the desire to be a part of something that has risk associated with it. One of the worst things that, that I've seen people do and, and was guilty of it somewhat early on or whenever this has happened, it, it's, you know, it's, it's been bad. And I don't know if, if you found this certainly at Rocket during the transition, which is the more that you put out there what is really happening, the, the ugly as well as the good, what I have observed is the people who are attracted to that are going to be the ones that give you the best shot at making it. And the ones that you feel like you have to sell or that you have to um, show that you know there, there's no problems or look at this amazing opportunity. Again, we have this narrative of, oh, the, the, you know, the Steve reality distortion field. Um, versus, I think today, the Steve Jobs reality distortion field, versus today where I think the true successful teams are going to be are the ones that you can lay out all the problems, all the challenges, all the risks, all the reality of your current situation and have them come back to you and be like, yeah, let's go do this. Like, we can, we can do this. And I think that that is really the attitude and the dynamic that has the greatest potential for success. And again, it's not, it's not the thing we tell people. We tell people as an entrepreneur, you need to be out there with the, this is the vision of the future, come join me. And what I have absolutely observed is it's the people that are excited about the challenges, the meaty challenges that have the greatest chance of moving your idea and your team and your company forward. I believe we're out of time because the countdown went down, but do we have time for one more question? The disembodied voice says yes, so. Okay. Hi. Um, there's no question that technology has disrupted many ways in which we live, like commerce or social interaction, but in my opinion, education hasn't been really disrupted by technology. The bulk of the people still wake up early, go to a classroom and yeah. sit there for hours listening to a teacher. Why do you think it hasn't happened? And do you see it happening in the short term future? Um, I, I see it happening. Uh, and it, it depends on your definition of short term. The, the trouble, one of the difficulties of education, and th this is why education is such an interesting field for technology and for entrepreneurship, is that it has all the hallmarks of an extraordinary opportunity. Um, it's really, really important to society to get it right. I mean, it's, it's actually one of the most important things we do as humans is, is teach and learn from each other. Um, it's um, a, a market which touches everybody deeply in their lives and deeply in their children's lives and deeply in their siblings' lives. Um, three, there's a ton of weird government regulation around it. And if you think about the industries that's seen the most crazy explosive growth, like you know the internet, it started with like intense government regulation that suddenly was, was changed and swept away. Um, and, and then finally, number four, there's like ripe opportunities for technology to disrupt it. I mean, I think everyone in this room can sit down and, and write down three things that technology can do or that entrepreneurs can do to improve education just off the top of your head. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's fish in a barrel. Um, but the challenge is, is that that third part in terms of regulation and the existing structure around education is so deeply entrenched. Everything from school buildings, teachers unions, laws, um, societal pressure, all of this is so deeply ingrained in us that it's going to, it's going to take time. What I actually see the disruption in education happening is not a long, slow, slogging process, but a, a buildup behind a dam that finally bursts and produces opportunity for a lot of new ideas. And I think we're seeing inklings of that right now, whether it's the Department of Education taking huge risks in establishing the Common Core, um, or you know, even some of the initiatives around testing, or the battles between like teachers' unions and, and populations in different states. Uh, all this is happening. And education is far bigger than the classroom. Like my company focuses on education and the rest of your life, um, w you know, f o o away from the classroom. Um, but, the, uh, but, but still, we see significant disruption there. So I think that and maybe healthcare are really like the two areas that, that feel like that uh, disruption should be happening now and it's not yet. Uh, and all that means is that more entrepreneurs need to pile in and put more pressure on it. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Hopefully you will have a productive and open conversation over lunch uh, or whatever you guys are doing next. And again, thank you so much. Thanks.